Today I'm going to show you how to replace the battery on a Quest 2. I think just like with a lot of electronic devices, as we start to see the Quest 2 age, we're seeing more and more requests for battery replacements. I think the real problem is, unlike cell phones and laptops in days of yore, the batteries on modern devices are really hard to get to. And the Quest is no exception there. The battery for the Quest is located pretty deep inside the headset, and you pretty much have to tear down the entire unit just to get to it. So I think for most people that means, once your battery starts to fail, unless you want to play plugged in all of the time, you really don't have a whole lot of options for keeping your device alive. Now maybe that was an intentional move on Meta's part, or maybe it's just the fact that in engineering, especially electronics engineering, there are trade-offs that you have to make. And for a device that's supposed to be lightweight and be worn on the face comfortably for hours on end, having a light and small battery with a limited lifespan is unfortunately one of those trade-offs. There are a lot of things that you could do to extend the life of your battery, but that's not what we're here to talk about. If you're here watching this video, I'm guessing that your battery is already kaput. And what you want to know now is, how do I get this into that to make this last longer? If you're new here to the channel, please do consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Here at Fix My Oculus, we're trying to build a database of videos and tutorials so that all VR users can extend the lifespan of their headsets, whether that's through maintenance or repairs. And if you're in the market for parts or repair tools, you can check out our website, fixmyoculus.com, for items like this replacement battery. Now with that said, let's get started on, on this repair. We're going to start by taking off the faceplate and removing these six T2 screws. Once you've taken out the screws, you can pop the clips on either side using a pry tool. We're just going to insert right here on the edge and pop. And then we're going to pop that one too. Now you can take your same pry tool. We're going to fold these ears down. You're going to take this same pry tool and you're going to lift up from the nose. And then this proximity sensor latch here, we're going to flip that open. Be gentle when you do this because if you damage this latch, you're in trouble. Once the latch is open, you can pull the proximity sensor straight back. Now we have five more screws to remove. One in the corner here, one in that corner there. These two white tabs here, we gotta take those screws out, and then this one at the nose. Once you've removed the screws that secure the faceplate on the front, we can remove the faceplate on the front by grabbing here at the top. I'm just gonna get my fingernails in the seam here and pull. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, and that just comes out. Next, I'm gonna remove this Wi-Fi antenna from the board here. It secures in, in this little bracket. And we need to remove that so that we can undo the power. There's three screws that hold this bracket in. They're all Phillips triple zero, so I don't need to change my bit. Now that I've undone that bracket, I can undo my charge port and I can undo my battery. Next, I'm gonna take off this retaining bar that has the Bluetooth antenna on it. There's eight screws that hold this in place. After that, we can just pull this retaining bar away. And we're gonna pull up on these clips and then this Bluetooth antenna just comes out like that. Next is our fan here. We do have one more T2 screw right here at the top. The T2 bit is a really small bit, so I highly recommend having a screwdriver that is resistant to stripping. Most of the time when customers send in a Quest that they've tried to repair themselves but have stripped a screw, it's almost always a T2 screw that they have stripped in the process. So if you're going to do a job like this, invest in a nice screwdriver. We have a pretty nice screwdriver set on our website that is resistant to stripping. And then I've got one more Phillips screw holding the fan in here. This LED is just adhered to the top of the fan. We'll pry that up using some tweezers. And then we'll take this fan out. And then make sure that you pull this connection straight back. Just like that. You don't want to lift up or wiggle or anything because that could damage that connection. Next, I'm going to tackle this tape here that holds in the proximity sensor and the lamp. If I don't take this tape off before I try to remove these cables, it has the potential to damage the latches. Next, I'm going to take this heat sink out. We're going to go ahead and take these four screws out, and the heat sink just pops off. Next, we can just go through here and take out all of these cables. The speaker cables just pop straight up. The latches you'll have to undo and then pull each ribbon straight back as to not damage the latch. For these three cables right here, these three on the bottom, there's a little bit of adhesive that you may need to sever with your spudger tool by just running behind the cable and making sure that that ribbon cable will come out. Next, I've got the four screws that hold in the motherboard as well as this hex bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and take these Phillips screws out now. These screws aren't magnetic and they can't be magnetized, so you may need to use tweezers to properly remove them. What I like to do is back the screw out a little bit and then get my tweezers underneath the screw so that way it doesn't just fall all over the place. 
Then I'll use a 3.5 hex bolt adapter to get around this little hex bolt and just unscrew it like that. And now that all the cables are released, we should be able to just pull this board straight up. This Wi-Fi antenna that routes behind the board can just be pulled straight up from the aluminum chassis. And then you've got four screws that hold in the LCD assembly. And we can take these little protective rings off for the cameras. We won't need those. And then you've got four screws that hold in the LCD assembly. Now the one last thing that's holding this LCD assembly in is a little bit of adhesive behind the battery. The last thing that really holds this LCD assembly in is a little bit of adhesive behind this battery cable. So I'm going to use my spudger to just cut that out. Perfect. And now this LCD assembly should just come straight out. Perfect. Alrighty. And now we have access to this battery. And there's really six screws that hold this in. I've got these two that hold the head strap retainer in as well as four, one, two, three, four here. So we'll go ahead and take those out. Now I've got my good battery and I've got my bad battery that we're replacing. One thing I need to do is I need to transfer this extender cable for the proximity sensor. There's a couple ways that you could take this off, but my preferred method is just to take a tool and run it along the bottom here to sever that adhesive while I put gentle pressure on lifting it up. But my preferred method is to use a tool here that has an edge to it. And we'll just work our way underneath to sever that adhesive. And then we can just lift it up. We'll transfer that to this battery. And there's two little holes here that we need to kind of line up. There we go. And most of the time that's sticky enough that I don't have to apply any additional adhesive or glue. It'll just stay there. Perfect. Now we'll put this back in place and we'll start putting our screws back in. Then we can just take our LCD assembly and put that back in place. The key here is to make sure that none of our cables get caught up underneath the LCD before we screw things back in because if they get caught up underneath there and then we start tying things down, it becomes really problematic. So I've got my two ribbons here. I've got my battery, Wi-Fi 1, Wi-Fi 2. Got my power connector. Got my microphones and their camera cable connectors. Got my charge port, speakers, and we're good to go. Go ahead and run this Wi-Fi antenna back up through its grooves here. These little clamps on the aluminum chassis hold it in place. And then we'll pop our motherboard back in place. And then one step that I am going to skip is I'm not going to put these screws back in place yet to hold the LCD assembly down. I'm going to screw the motherboard back in, plug everything back in, test it, and then I'll screw the LCD assembly in once I know that it's good and ready. The problem that I've run into historically is that I get everything put back together and then something doesn't work and I have to trade out a component or a part or I've missed something. And so just out of habit, I don't like to put that back in place because it saves me some time working back through it. We'll go ahead and put these cables back in place so we can go ahead and test it. The battery connection is the easiest one to mess up because if you don't align this properly, you can actually damage that connection on the board very easily. So one thing I like to do is eyeball it. I don't know how well you can see this. One thing I like to do is eyeball the placement here. And then once I know it's aligned, I'll press down firmly. And you'll feel a little click. All right, and now we can see if it gets power. That's a good sign, and we're charging. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a proximity sensor so that I can go ahead and power the unit on. Just make sure that everything works right. Gives me an opportunity to test things like cameras and microphones. All right, everything seems functional. We've got tracking and audio out of both sides. Unit seems like it's getting power and the proximity sensor is working. So we're going to go ahead and put everything back together. I'll go ahead and put these screws in that I skipped on the last step. And then we'll go ahead and put our heat sink back on. We'll follow that with our fan. Remember we have the one Phillips screw that goes on this side and then we've got one tiny T2 screw that goes up top. I go ahead and use my tweezers to plug this fan back in. Tweezers really help on the job like this. Cool. And then we're going to plug in this Bluetooth antenna. And then last but not least, we're going to put this bracket back on here and I'm going to do that starting with this standoff screw. I'm going to go ahead and get that bit that we used before, the hex bit. Tighten that up, and then we should be able to just slide this bracket back in place. There is a little hook on the bottom of this bracket that needs to go underneath the board. And then that'll sit on that standoff there. And then we can clip this Wi-Fi antenna back in just with a little pressure. Perfect. Oh, I almost forgot my protective rings. Just remember these rings are different. One's got two holes and one has one. The one with two holes says TR, that's for right, and the one that has one says TL, that's for left. And that's headset left and right, not my left and right. And now we can go ahead and secure this faceplate with the screws that we took out earlier. 
And then we're gonna line up this proximity sensor with that extender cable. Just make sure that that cable is all the way in there before you try to secure this latch. It's a real nuisance if you get this far and then you break that. Then we'll do one more test just to make sure that everything's working right. We've got a little light. Alrighty, everything seems to be working. Tracking's working, audio's working, proximity sensor's working. We're in good shape. And that battery replacement is complete. This unit's ready to go home. Guys, I appreciate you hanging out with me today and learning more about battery replacement and the Quest 2 repair process. If you do have any additional questions or repair requests, please uh, drop us a comment. That helps out a lot. And if you enjoy content like this, please uh, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. We're doing our best to create a whole database of tutorials and informational videos to help people extend the life of their VR headsets. If you're feeling pretty confident about doing a battery replacement yourself now that you've watched the video, you can buy the batteries off of our website, fixmyoculus.com, as well as any other parts and tools you may need for your VR headset repair. If you're not feeling confident about doing the repair yourself, we do offer this as a service. So the folks who aren't inclined toward DIY repairs have an option as well. And you can learn more about that on our website too. That's really all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. We will see you on the next one.